Hello and welcome back everyone. So in the last episode we created some turrets, we textured them. Now if I select a turret and hit Control D to duplicate, I can just drag that across. And as long as I'm as long as I'm holding Control, it should snap snap into place. Um, so I just put one over here, and I'll put one over here, and another one over here, like that. And now you'll notice as soon as I hit play, no matter how far away from the enemy they are. Uh, these these turrets automatically start tracking the enemy, right? So he's he's pointed at him, he's pointed at him, and we should probably update this so that they only target enemies within a certain range. And also, um, the way we have it set up, uh, we're just using one line of code for the targeting, and so in one single frame, this is going to update. And so if if they switch targets, like if this guy has a if if this turret is targeting this guy, and he's coming along, he's going to get to here, and then he's going to go out of range. And then let's say another guy comes in and gets to like here. Um, this this turret is going to go from targeting this guy, and then it's instantly going to snap and target this guy. And so rather than snapping from one rotation to the other, um, we're going to create like a smoother um, spinning rotation. So to do that, um, let's first create the range. So I'm going to say public float range and so now I have a variable called range it's it's of type float and that's just um, like a, a number with a decimal and it's public and we're gonna set this to like 8f and that's just um, the, the F stands for float and now let's calculate the distance so let's create another another variable um, float distance and that's going to be vector3.distance and essentially um, this is a built-in class within Unity and it exposes some methods to us that we can use um, so there's, there's a built-in distance method within this vector3 class and we're going to take advantage of that so that um, now what that expects is a, a vector starting point and a vector ending point and then it's going to figure out how far apart they are and so we can pass in whatever we want, um, but speci specifically we're going to pass in the position of this turret and the position of the target. And so that's that's going to calculate the distance between where the, tur the turret is, where the target is, and then it's just going to put that value in this float. So now I can say if distance is less than or equal to range, do something. And we might as well just put this in that um, in that branch. No, oh, and I broke something. Oh, right. So target. Um, I meant to type target dot position. Um, so this is transform dot position. That's the vector three. Target dot position. That's another vector three. And play. And now, see, you can see this guy is staying still, and then once he once this gets close enough, he snaps over and starts pointing at him. Um, I don't really like the way they jump around like that, and so we're going to give them a smooth rotation. Now, for that, um, we kind of have to do this backwards. Uh, we we know what we want, but we don't know how to get there. So what we want is a transform dot rotation, right? So we're going to assign something to the rotation of, of this object that this script is attached to. And so we could say quaternion.rotate towards. And now what, th what that's going to do is um, rotates. Basically, we ha we ha we're going to have a desired rotation, right? We're going to have, like, let's say we're pointed off this way. This guy comes into range. And now the desired rotation would be to point toward him. So we have the current rotation, which is pointing this way. Desired rotation, which is pointing this way. And now what this does is it, it slowly um, interpolates between those values. So every, every frame, we move a little bit closer from what we're at now to what we want to be. And so we're going to have this desired rotation. We don't, we don't know what it is yet. But we're going to have some... We're going to have some goal where we're pointed exactly toward the enemy. Right, so right now we're at transform.rotation. 
that's whatever the rotation is currently. And we're trying to move to, toward desired rotation. And we're going to rotate by some amount. Let's just say public float rotation speed. And by default, I'll just put this to 100. All right, so what that does is rotates us from this to this by this amount every single frame. And we don't necessarily want to rotate an amount per frame. It makes more sense to rotate an amount per second. And so um, if we multiply by time dot delta time, that essentially takes us from doing this every frame, and it's going to normalize it by how long it takes to render the frame. Um, that might not make a lot of sense, but essentially this is um, this makes the rotation happen at the same speed independent of frame rate. Um, so if that doesn't make any sense, just to, just ignore it. But um, but it's useful. It's useful to have. So now we have this. We're trying to rotate toward a desired rotation, but we don't know what that is yet. We know the position of the target, but we don't know the position in relation to where we are, and we don't know the Quartonian rotation to point to that. Um, so, so we need. Well, yeah. Well, now, now essentially we're working backwards. So we have vector three direction. So we we want a, a Quartonian ultimately. Um, all we know is two positions. We know our position, we know the enemy's position. So to get the direction between those, we can just subtract one from the other. Transform.position minus target.position. All right, so now direction is a vector direction from, from where we are to the enemy. And now we just have to convert that to a quaternion, and that's going to be the desired rotation. So that'll be quaternion dot look rotation, and now this creates a rotation with the specified forward and upwards directions. Um, so, so essentially, that just means it's taking our vector and it's it's giving a it's going to output a um, quaternion, which has four values instead of three. It's kind of hard to explain. I don't really understand what a quaternion is, um, but but they're they're better than vectors because. Um, they're more pre they're more precise and they're less prone to errors. All right, so we we start where we are, we figure out um, where the enemy is, and by subtracting those, we have a direction from us to the enemy, and then we convert that into a quaternion, and then we slowly rotate from where we are toward where we want to be by rotation speed times however long it takes to render the frame. And that should give us a slow, um, nice rotation. Hopefully this works. All right, that looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that a lot. Um, now, if we wanted to, um, we could we could change the rotation speed um, in the script. If, if we change it here, um, some of these objects have already been serialized with the current rotation speed. So see that this is 100. Now if I change this in the script to like 110 and save that, you'll notice that the component here still says 100. Um, and, and that's just because this value got serialized. Um, if we want it to always display whatever the script says, um, I think there's a property that we could use to prevent it from serializing. Uh, I can't remember what it is off the top of my head. Um, but uh, but basically, this, th this value is going to be applied when you add the script to an object. And then after the script is added, you have to control, th control the value here. So now if we want to mod modify this, we can change it in the inspector. So now th this one should snap really fast. Yeah. All right, so I hope that made sense. Um, I'll cut this video off here. Let me know in the, in the comments if you have any questions.